Hello everyone, in this video you are going to get the elaborate explanation of literary devices used in the sentences given in exercises of the second lesson of Lost Spring or thinking about language. So let's proceed. So now we are on page number 21 thinking about language and we are going to do the exercise based on literary devices. First sentence is Sahib Alam, which means the Lord of the Universe, is directly in contrast to what Sahib is in reality. Irony is used here. So, answer kya hoga? Irony. Now, what is irony? Irony is in this literary device, we use language that normally signifies the opposite, typically for humorous or emphatic effect. Now, your definitions are much more than that. You have irony. Hota kya? Opposite cheese. Uh, for example, two opposite things are one with the other, which को contradict the other. For example, for example, you can say a marriage counselor filed for divorce. Now see, marriage counselor. What is um, his job his job is कि वो दूसरों के divorce रुकवाती है दूसरों का uh, counseling करती है जिससे उनका marriage break ना हो और यहां what she has done और what he has done he has filed for divorce तो opposite चीज़े हो गई ना marriage counselor जो दूसरों की शादी बचाता है he himself has filed for divorce this is the example of irony और you can say a pilot has a fear of height has a fear of heights irony hai pilot hai to wo hamesha aeroplane mein hi rahega aur use kya hai fear of heights hai to opposite cheeze ho gayi hai to ye irony hai likewise why we are saying that, that in this sentence uh, we have used irony because the name sahib e alam signifies the opposite of the poverty stricken situation of sahib so irony is used in the first sentence and this is the answer right i hope you have got this the second sentence is drowned in an air of desolation and the literary device used here is metaphor now while explaining metaphor i'm going to explain you two of the literary devices both metaphors and similes Actually, both metaphors and similes are used to make comparisons. These two के दोनों literary devices comparison के लिए use होते हैं. Simile जहाँ भी होगा, वो हमेशा word use करेगा like or as comparison के लिए. For example, life is like a box of chocolate. So wherever you find the word like, you will see in comparison, you will see that simile is uh, used here. And the other example is he is as tall as a cliff so here we have used as so in both these sentences we have used simile now metaphor is directly it directly states a comparison okay love is a battlefield see see the love ko kya bol diya? battlefield bol diya. otherwise agar ye simile hota to hum kya bolte? love is like a battlefield lekin humne seedha agar bola love is a battlefield to wo metaphor ho gaya. Now next, she is the nightingale of the school. See, we have this girl ko nightingale bola. So this metaphor. If we use the simile, what is it? She sings like a nightingale. Okay. And now, uh, uh, why? If uh, you want to know why this is metaphor, drowned in an air of desolation. Here, the dilapidated and isolated situation of temple is compared with drowned in an air of desolation directly compared that's why here it is um, i'm saying that metaphor is used here now the third sentence is Sima Puri, a place on the periphery of delhi yet miles away from it metaphorically the answer to this sentence is antithesis the literary device used here is antithesis now what is antithesis Antithesis emphasizes the idea of contrast by parallel structures of the contrasted phrases or clauses. Abhi kya hai ki ye ek hi cheez is setting foot on the moon. Right? Or do opposite uh, phrases use ki hai small step and a giant step. So this becomes 
antithesis ek hi object hai setting foot on the moon may be a small step for a man small step for a man but a giant step for mankind so two opposite phrases are used here in the same sentence by making a parallel structure so opposite phrases are used here so this is called antithesis and here why it is antithesis because see it is written a place on the periphery of delhi means it is very close to delhi but further what they have written yet miles away from it so two opposite phrases are used here now in next sentence for the children it is wrapped in wonder for the elders it's a means of survival once again it is antithesis see you this is also now why fourth one is also antithesis because see the same thing it is wrapped in wonder uh, for the children it is wrapped in wonder and for the elders it is a means of survival wrapped in wonder means of survival opposite ho gaya the for the children for the elders it is also opposite so ye idhar bhi antithesis humne use kiya hai theek hai kyunki opposite phrase mein contrast idea ko emphasize kiya hua hai ऑपोजिट फ्रेज यूज करते हुए ठीक है नेक्स्ट सेंटेंस इज एज हर हैंड्स मूव मैकेनिकली लाइक द टोंग्स ऑफ अ मशीन आई वांडर इफ शी नोज द सैंक्टिटी ऑफ बैंगल्स शी हेल्प्स मेक सो द आंसर टू फिफ्थ वन इज वेरी सिंपल सिमिली बिकॉज टू थिंग्स आर कंपेयर विद द वर्ड लाइक दैट्स वाई द आंसर टू फिफ्थ सेंटेंस इज सिमिली दिस आई ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन यू अलॉन्ग विद मेटाफर Now the sixth sentence is, she still has bangles on her wrist, but not light in her eyes. So what literary device is used here in the sixth sentence? This is pun. What is pun now? A joke based on interplay of homophones. It's not always joke, but the basic uh, concept is that it plays with the use of homophones. Homophones, uh, jinka pronunciation same rehta hai, though their meanings are different. Uh, and sometimes spellings are also different uh the tallest building example is the tallest building in the town is the library it has thousands of stories tallest building hai library why kyunki usme bahut sari books hoti hai na usme stories hoti hai to wo likh diya hai while stories ki spelling kya hoti hai building ki jo sabse zyada tall building hogi usme bahut sari jo stories hongi first story second story third story uski spelling kya hogi s t o r e y s right so this is called interplay of homophones now you will ask why pun is used in this sentence uh, the reason is bangle has two meanings one literally mean literal meaning that the ornaments that ladies used to wear after marriage and the hidden meaning is slavery or boundation that the lady was bound to work in the bangle industry now seventh one few airplanes fly over firozabad now what is the literary device used here once again it is pun how it's pun because airplanes this word plane has hidden meaning in it one is aeroplane right and the other meaning is the consciousness or courage so what the author wants to tell here that there are not many people who had the courage to dare or to dream something unlike others to make their future in a different way right or in a unique way means very few have the courage to go against the convention of the society so that's why we are saying that pun is used in this sentence now the eighth sentence is web of poverty straight away metaphor hai because seedhe seedhe se kya bol diya hai web of poverty poverty like a web instead what they have said web of poverty it is metaphor and the ninth one once again scrounging for gold instead of scrounging for valuable things what the author has used straight away gold so once again it is metaphor right tenth sentence is and survival in seema puri means rag picking through the years it has acquired the proportion of a fine art it is a hyperbole now hyperbole means 
द थिंग्स दैट आर एग्जेजरेटेड किसी चीज़ को बहुत बड़ा चढ़ा के कहना वो होता है इस लिटरेट डिवाइस में फॉर एग्जाम्पल ही इज रनिंग फास्टर दैन द विंड द पर्सन वुड बी रनिंग वेरी फास्ट बट इट इज रिटर्न ही इज रनिंग फास्टर दैन द विंड ऐसा पॉसिबल नहीं है तो हियर वी वुड से दैट इट इज हाई प्रबले और द मैन इज एज टॉल एज अ क्लिफ तो दैट इज सिमिली बिकॉज एज एंड हाई प्रबले क्योंकि पर्सन एक ह्यूमन बींग कितना भी टॉल हो क्लिफ के जितना टॉल नहीं हो सकता तो दिस इज कॉल्ड हाई प्रबले एंड वाई वी आर सींग दैट हाई प्रबले इज यूज है क्योंकि फाइन आर्ट इज अ वेरी हाई क्लास थिंग एंड इट कांट बी कंपेयर विद रैग पिकिंग ओके तो दो इट इज रिटर्न दैट इट इज अ क्रिएटिव थिंग भाई बहुत मेहनत करनी पड़ती है रैग पिकिंग के लिए बट इट कांट बी कंपेयर विद फाइन आर्ट दैट्स वाई वी से दैट योर हाई प्रबले इज यूज the 11th sentence is the steel canister seems heavier than the plastic bag he would carry so lightly over his shoulders what literary device is used here this is called paradox now what is paradox a sentence that appears self centered or silly but has a latent truth or a sentence contrary to accepted traditional truth wo sentence jo uh, जो चैलेंज करता है ट्रेडिशनल ट्रूथ को या जिस जो उसके अगेंस्ट बोला जाता है दैट इज पैराडॉक्स राइट फॉर एग्जांपल आई कैन रेजिस्ट एनीथिंग बट टेम्पटेशन तो हम टेम्पटेशन को ही तो रेजिस्ट करते हैं ट्रेडिशनली अगर हमें रेजिस्ट करना है तो टेम्पटेशन को ही करेंगे बट क्या लिखा हुआ है बाकी सब कुछ रेजिस्ट कर सकते हैं हम टेम्पटेशन के अलावा सो दिस इज अगेंस्ट द ट्रेडिशनल ट्रूथ सेकेंड एग्जाम्पल इज ट्रूथ इज हनी विच इज बेटर नाउ हनी इज नेवर बेटर राइट बट according to uh sorry according to traditional truth honey is never bitter but here what is written truth is honey but it is bitter so it is once again uh, against the traditional truth and why if you ask why it is uh, called paradox is used here because it is written the steel canister the steel canister seems heavier than the plastic bag he would carry so lightly over his shoulders so it is a paradox because steel canister according to traditional truth is lighter than the bag filled with garbage because that steel canister must be uh, containing the tea and that is not that heavy so this sentence is also against the traditional truth that's why paradox is used here and this is how the exercises of this lesson ends i'm sure that the video is helpful to all the students I'll catch you in the next video. Till then, keep studying. Goodbye.